welcome to Hall Pass, the Virgin Islands Department of Education's talk show highlighting all things education. I'm your host, Jure Ford. Technology is ever so present in all our lives, especially among young people. However, as technology has been a benefit, it can also be a challenge. Today, we will take a look at cyberbullying and social media risks. Get Involved VI is a group of young professionals who care about what's going on in our community, and they are battling the issue of cyberbullying. We have with us Melanie Turnbull, a member of Get Involved VI. We also have some of the winners of the group's recent anti-cyberbullying video contest, Prince Govia and Jonathan Camillo, two members of the three-person Cyber Partners team. Welcome. Also on the show is the Executive Director of the Virgin Islands Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault Council, or DVSAC, Mrs. Kumana Simmons Isangasen. She will discuss social media risk factors and how young people can combat these factors. Well, welcome everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, before we get started, I'm going to need the hall pass. Thank you. And so we're going to get started with Get Involved VI. Okay. And I just want to know if you could tell me a little bit about your organization. Okay, well, Get Involved VI is basically, like you said, it's a group of young professionals uh, that decided to come together to raise awareness for issues that we see facing the community. Uh, we had our launch in 2014. We did a voter awareness campaign entitled Talk is Cheap, Votes are Priceless. And so we came back again. Uh, and planned in 2015, but launched in 2016, our very first anti-cyberbullying video competition. It's entitled No Bad Mind Online. And so basically, Get Involved is that short-term project goal-oriented organization that taps into what are the issues that's facing the community currently, mm -hmm. uh, and how can we raise awareness or shed, shed some light on those particular issues. So. That's Get Involved in a Nutshell. I am one of seven. Mm -hmm. uh, it's myself, Melanie Turnbull, Sulane Walker, Amanda Warner, Al Vincent Hudson, Janelle Sorrow, Allison Gregory, and Aaliyah Shari Smith. Okay, and so you recently held a video contest thing in St. Thomas uh, for the St. Thomas High School students on cyberbullying. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your interest in cyberbullying? Why was that topic? a focus of interest? Well, I think uh, starting around the spring of 2015, there was uh, a release of a number of videos within the community uh, that was uh, intended on harassing and demeaning uh, members of the community. And so when we saw this uptick in uh, uh, videos that, are, that have been released and shared and, and sent as text messages or WhatsApp messages, um, and the whole intent was to embarrass or shame um, individuals, we decided, you know, we need to do something to stop this because it was becoming rampant. I think there was like a release of maybe four or five videos in a span of two or three months, and these videos were going viral. And viral is, is pretty significant for the Virgin Islands community. We're so small, so for something to go, you know, relatively viral here, we said we really need to do something about this, and what better way to do it than to uh, present a competition uh, for students um, and try to start young. Um, we didn't want to, because even though cyber, you find it in every demographic, you find it amongst young adults, adults, older adults, uh, we really wanted to start it, start younger, and so we decided to uh, go to students and children, because um, this is a generation where everybody's on their phone, yeah. and every, you know, and everybody's on, Facebook and Snapchat and Kick, and I don't even know all of the social media outlets they have now. You know, there, there are so many. Um, and so we got our start from actually seeing an issue in the community, seeing a problem, seeing all these videos circulating, very, very vicious, nasty, and explicit videos. Um, and so instead of just being a part of, you know, the community in, in consuming this, we tried to find a way of shedding light on it, educating people about the dangers of it. And so we came up with uh, the anti-cyberbullying competition uh, where you had to present a 90-second video, teams of three. We opened it to all St. Thomas and St. John students, and we got some sponsors involved to help us give out prizes. Uh, choice 
Communications was a sponsor, Alpine Securities is a sponsor, Board of Education all got on board um, to give these incredible prizes. We have a GoPro, first place, oh. for Cyber <laughs> <That's nice. laughs> Second prize, um, they were getting a Kindle HD Fire, and the third place winners are going to receive a Cardow inspired VI watch. Mm -hmm. Those are some nice yeah, prizes. I know. Yeah, I know. Oh, so how many submissions <laughs> did you actually receive for this contest? So in all, we got uh, nine submissions across two schools. We had um, most of our submissions came from Charlotte Zamali, but we also had uh, a couple teams come out of Antilles. And what was the criteria to judge then all of these videos? Okay, so uh, we broke it up into three categories. Uh, Message was, of course, the most important, and then creativity, and then the theme, the overall theme of the video. Uh, and because none of us were videographers, we decided to go to the best. Mm -hmm. And so we went to three local professional videographers um, to vote and review all of the videos. They were all shared the same videos at the same time and had an opportunity to review the videos. And they gave us our winners <laughs> and so basically all we had to do was announce um, and we we send them an email even just yesterday um, announcing um, that they were uh, the winners of the competition they were very excited they responded back <laughs> like almost immediately <laughs> we'll be there you know so um, and so uh, we were really looking for really content mm -hmm. are they really getting exactly what cyberbullying is what it's about and how ca how can we stop it and so the video submissions, it was individuals, it was teams, could it be both? All teams. All so, teams. And, and in the planning stage of this um, competition, you know, we, we, we struggled back and forth with whether or not we should allow it to be individuals or teams, and then we settled on teams of three. And so everyone, every team had to be a team of three. They submitted it uh, online by 1159. I, uh, very official. Yeah, <laughs> Fe February 28th. It, you know, we had a flyer, all the information was on. We have a website, www.nobadmindonline.com. We had a website for it with all the rules, all the competition information. We wanted to make it like a real nice uh, competition to get the students engaged. And, and we got some participation that we were very, very pleased with. Okay, and so we have the wingers here yes. today. Yes. Um, and so we have Prince, we have Jonathan, and then you guys also have another team member that's not on stage with us, and that's David Abbott. And so you guys just had a wonderful video, and we actually have it in the studio. Uh, we have the award-winning video mm -hmm. for the anti-cyberbullying contest. Uh, so let's take a look at it now. Cyberbullying is the use of electronic communication to bully a person, typically by sending messages of an intimidating or threatening nature. People engage in cyberbullying mainly because they see it as a way to stay popular. Hurting others makes them feel powerful. It also helps them cope with their own self-esteem, which is very low. A person who gets cyberbullied should not try to self-harm or commit suicide. They should try to get adult help. Together, we can all stop cyberbullying. Wow. So I can't believe that you guys made that. I mean, that was so professionally done. Not only was it just the artistic feel of the echoing and, and the going back and forth in between scenes, but really the content and the message uh, and the feeling behind cyberbullying. And so I just want to know, what made you two participate in this contest? Which one well, wants to go for it? <laughs> well, my experience in elementary was 
you know, somewhat like that. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't cyberbullying. It was actually bullying in real life. Mm -hmm. And so you wanted then to take your experience and make it good. Yes, because it's basically quite similar. Okay. What about you, Jonathan? Well, it makes me interesting um, to make a better life and people that stop bullying, bullying mm -hmm. make a better life, like how God brings us to earth, like brothers, human beings. And so you said pranks that you were bullied in, in, in real life, real time, not in online, in elementary school. Have you guys or, you, or your friends ever dealt with cyberbullying then? I haven't associated with anybody who, who was cyberbullied. Okay. What about you? Not really. Not really. So why did you think that this was then an important topic to tackle? Um, just to give a message to other people or other worlds that are getting bullied in, mm -hmm. so they can see a message, so they can understand what a message is about and to stop bullying. And how then did you guys know even about cyberbullying? You haven't experienced it, your, your friends haven't dealt with it. How did you know the whole process, the feeling, the emotion? Because that was very real. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I had to touch, like, what? <laughs> well, how did you guys capture that? I didn't, I, I, I don't really associate with people who get cyberbullied. I haven't really met anyone, but I, I saw examples of it online mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And people from like New York, you know, I would log in and I would see them getting cyberbullied and stuff. Okay, what about you? I actually, um, I don't watch videos, and I see some videos from children's teachers getting hating children, their children, and students. And I thought that, that was not good, and we make this video to give an example to them to stop bullying, to make a better life. That's wonderful, because even though you guys haven't experienced it, you guys have the empathy and the emotion to then put yourself mm -hmm. in someone's shoes who has been cyberbullied. Mm -hmm. So then you guys just make a wonderful message mm -hmm. on okay. why we should stop and eradicate cyberbullying from our schools. Mm -hmm. Now, we also have, not just about cyberbullying, but social media risks mm -hmm. from the Virgin Islands Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault, Assault Council, or DVSAC. We welcome the executive director, Mrs. Kanuma Simmons Isanison. She is going to be here to talk to us about the social media risks that kids face today. But before we get started, let's take a look at this. What is a healthy relationship? Not getting high or using illegal drugs. It's being sober. It means respect. Not hitting. Being kind, not hurting each other. Es la paz. I think it's talking things out. Not being violent. Not getting high or using illegal drugs. Not getting drunk. A healthy relationship is not getting drunk. It's not using drugs. Caring for each other. Resolving our conflicts peacefully. That's what a healthy relationship means to me. For more information, contact DBSAC at 340-719-0144. The Healthy School Initiative is a partnership between the VI DBSAC and Haida. So I just think it's absolutely wonderful that we got to see a video about cyberbullying from students, and now we get to hear about the healthy relationships in schools from students again. So I want to <laughs> welcome you. Well, thank you so much for having me. And first off, I have to say, I want DVSAC to partner with you all and okay. get involved. All right. um, so this good. is the perfect marriage right this now. So I'm very good. excited because you did put a video together. And our organization, we have the Healthy School Initiative, yeah. um, which is a six to eight week pilot program in our junior high schools mm -hmm. that is aimed at working with students on a daily basis to talk mm -hmm. about cyberbullying, social media, sexting, healthy relationships, family violence, and a plethora of other issues that we address and that we see among our young students. So um, I'm really excited to see your video. <laughs> and in fact, one of the things that we do with our Healthy School Initiative is provide prevention education, essentially. Mm -hmm. and the importance of that is even when you say that you don't know anyone who's been cyberbullied, but you actually do. Because mm -hmm. when you talk about the situations <laughs> yeah. where videos and text messages were exchanged, 
that is cyberbullying. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things that we do at DDSAC is to help put a name to some of the things that we see. Because mm -hmm. often we're able to describe a situation, but we don't actually name it and realize yeah. that um, indeed some of these things are crimes, child pornography, especially mm -hmm. when we have students who are 18 and under who either have possession of videos or pictures um, in the nude of other students, that's child pornography. Um, and so they just may think it's just a message, right. right? I could just delete, but they don't really realize the repercussions of having that information and sharing it. So we provide that kind of education in the schools and um, cyberbullying is definitely one of those topics that are hot. Yes. And so we address that as well. Mm -hmm. And so what are the reactions from uh, some of the students when you do talk about mm -hmm. these things Like some of them maybe thinking about engaging in or are right. engaging in. Right, so most of the students unfortunately have mm -hmm. had some kind of experience where either their photo was shared, for example, or they've received photos of their um, classmates. And so some of the discussions that we have are, well, what do you do when you receive this kind of information? Who do you seek for help? And so, one, we're happy that we're able to serve as a third party, someone who is helping them and they're, we're in the school setting, but we're not of their school. So they sometimes mm -hmm. feel like, oh, I can share this information with somebody that I don't necessarily see every day. Mm -hmm. um, so that is helpful because the first thing we always say is you want to tell someone, get one of your staff, your teachers, your counselors involved so they can help to put a stop to it. And then not only are we providing the education in the schools for the students as to how you can respond and to help with ending cyberbullying, but it's also educational for the teachers as well in recognizing that if students share this information with them, they're mandatory reporters. So if there's anything of child abuse or neglect that's involved with sharing those videos, they have to report. So it's educational mm -hmm. for the students and for the teachers and administration as well. Right. And so then what does an unhealthy relationship with mm -hmm. social media look like? Right. So an unhealthy relationship with social media, there are several signs or red flags as we'll say. One of them, for example, uh, just even if you look at texting, for mm -hmm. example, if someone is texting too often mm -hmm. or they're trying to find out where you are by the use of text messaging, mm -hmm. usually that's a red flag. And so we don't always want to label something like, oh, you're in an abusive relationship. Right. Yeah. But it's something to say, mm, maybe we should reconsider or talk about our boundaries mm -hmm. and you know, stating that you know, I have a right to privacy as do you and we mm -hmm. do have a right to boundaries and so let's talk about what's comfortable for me in terms of how many text messages we're sending and receiving. Then something else to look out for in terms of social media and social networking sites um, might also be sharing information that you don't want shared. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a relationship with someone and you do share videos or you share pictures that you didn't necessarily want them out on social media, but you do find it on social media, yeah. that's also a red flag because they're disrespecting boundaries and what your relationship is all about. So those are the kinds of things that we talk about with students. And again, it's helping them to kind of put a name to it. Most students have experienced this to some degree, even if it's not with a boyfriend-girlfriend situation, mm -hmm. but even just with friends, mm -hmm. not honoring the fact that, okay, well, I was at X, Y, and Z place, maybe I don't want everybody to know, but they yes. still put checked in with so-and-so at this place. Mm -hmm. And so those are things that we have to be considerate of people. We may not mind someone knowing where we are, but we have to be considerate of our friends and our intimate partners as to whether they want that information shared or not. So those are some of the things that we address. And what about the sexting and the inappropriate text messages, mm -hmm. videos? What mm -hmm. should students be aware of? What should parents be right. aware of? Right. So uh, for students, first off, I will say that um, I know a lot of times we have different agencies and organizations that come to the school and they say, oh, this technology is so bad. And so you never hear me say that. Um, we won't say that at DVSAC. This is just the way of the world. But it's just the way that we choose to use the technology. And so what we always try to stress is that, you know, unlike other forms of violence where you know you might have a bruise from physical violence and that may heal or if you have emotional or psychological abuse that takes place you can go to a counselor mm -hmm. and that event kind of starts to fade away because you're able to heal from it with cyberbullying or social media and inappropriate videos and messages mm -hmm. that never goes away mm -hmm. so unlike a bruise that may heal or unlike a situation that you may start to forget because you're getting counseling for it that social media piece is so important because once you press send it's always available 
somewhere. And so we always stress that with students that at this delicate time of life when you're going to be applying for jobs, trying to get into different colleges and universities, seeking scholarship opportunities, you don't want that information to get into the hands of someone who might be able to give an opportunity, but because they have hand of that photo, then they might think twice. And not only for the victim, because unfortunately, the victim is usually the one who has to suffer with thinking mm -hmm. about, oh, what is my employer going to think? Yes. And sometimes the perpetrator is left faceless. But if you're charged with sharing information, then that's something that could be on your record, too. So it's not safe for anyone on either side. Um, so we share that with students. And then in terms of parents, we always encourage parents, yes, you want to give students healthy space, healthy boundaries, but as a parent, you want to always be involved with your students and your children in terms of what social media they're on. You might want to have some parent settings where you can monitor certain things, um, but you always want to make sure that you look at signs. When we talk about cyberbullying, if you find that your child doesn't want to go to school anymore or their grades are getting lower because they're skipping classes, those are signs that something might be happening at home and as parents, we have to be involved because they're relying on us as adults to help them. And so then I want to put the two young gentlemen here on the hot seat a little bit. Do you guys know of anyone or have dealt with um, the sending of the, the sexting, the inappropriate messages? Is that something that goes on in, in your peer groups and your school? It, go, it definitely goes on in the school, but I don't associate with that. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> What about you, Jonathan? Um, I really, I really don't like to be with those things. But I, I never seen them. But I was with my teachers, so I never been seeing them those things. But they exist. Yes. They do exist. And so, if you would did know of somebody who's getting involved with this sort of sexting inappropriate, I mean, what's the best thing that you think someone can do to tell that person to stop? They should report it immediately. Good, good. Mm -hmm. Who, who do they, they report it to, though? Well, when I say report it med immediately, I mean, like, the teachers, their parents, like, the most people at once. Mm -hmm. Well, and how do you feel about that response? Mm -hmm. Is that a good? I definitely agree, because we yeah. did talk about that a little bit. But something else to also remember, if something like that comes to you, delete, delete, delete. Yes. So yeah. that's what we always yes. say. Don't be Don't someone who it. is sharing and helping that cycle to continue. So if it's something that you do encounter that does come to you or is in your inbox or something like that, first off, delete it. Um, it's just in respect for the person or also in respect for yourself because like you said, you don't associate with that. And so you don't want to engage in it either by sharing it or sending it. So you absolutely want to delete. And then again, especially in a school setting, you want to report it to the counselor or to the principal, someone who would be able to take action. And if it's something that's happening to you at home, you want to talk to your parents. If for some reason you're not able to talk to your parents, we do have partners like Family Resource Center on St. Thomas, St. John, and the Women's Coalition of St. Croix who would be able to provide that support. And they do offer um, confidential services as well. So for individuals who are 18 and under, sometimes mm -hmm. there are some you know, disclaimers there mm -hmm. because they have to share some things um, with parents or, in a gar or a guardian. But for you know, most cases, you're able to go to them and seek assistance if it's you. But if it's somebody else, definitely delete and report. OK. And why do you think that this is happening? Why do you think it's becoming such mm -hmm. a, a trending thing amongst young people? Right. Well, one of the, the reasons why we focus so much on the message of healthy relationships is because, well, for one, it's happening amongst young people because this is their age of technology. Mm -hmm. This is the way that they communicate. And I don't even say they as they and them. This is the way I communicate right. now yeah. also. <laughs> so, you know, I'm constantly on my phone checking emails, checking, you know, my social media. It's just the way of the world. So it's something that we have to embrace. But then we also have to recognize those healthy boundaries, which is why we really promote, you know, healthy relationship. It begins with me. Just recognizing when am I infringing on somebody else's privacy or their right to make a decision about something and I think because um, we have become so skilled sometimes in interacting with a computer that may not necessarily have feelings we don't realize that some of mm -hmm. the things that we do through that computer has an effect on people who actually do have feelings who are actually people and you know that you are human, human. Yeah. Yes. so we get used to interacting with non-human um, devices and not really realize the effect that it has on people at the end of the day so I think that's part of it but um, 
as we promote the healthy relationships, boundaries is one thing, having respect for others and yourself is another thing, and then just also communication. So just asking, is it okay if I post this picture and tag you in it? It's just a courtesy. So as we learn to be more courteous of other people, then I think that it will improve. And that in turn goes along with cyberbullying as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just knowing that there are emotions from a person that's right. behind the computer. Absolutely, exactly. Wonderful. And so then I want to ask you two gentlemen again, um, what are your feelings on all of this technology that is going on in our schools, all the sexting, all the cyberbullying? Just tell me one thing you would want to tell someone if they're into that. Well, I would just tell them to stop because you wouldn't want someone else to do it to you or your family members. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, it looks like that's all the time we have today and our hall pass has expired. I want to thank each and every one of you to please, please and enjoy the show. Watch it with us. You guys were absolutely amazing. And I just, I know that this is such an important topic and especially Melanie, you with your Get Involved VI, Kanuma, you with the council, you guys are doing such a wonderful job and clearly we have amazing young people that, you know, they just, they know that there's things that they can do as well right. to help in the initiative to stop cyberbullying, to stop mm -hmm. sexting, to stop all of the dark dangers of the internet and of technology because it really is an amazing tool yes but we have to use it correctly so i just want to thank all of you guys for everything that you've done and i really appreciate you all being on hall pass um, and like i said it looks like our time has expired on hall pass but i want to thank our guests and i want to thank our viewers and i'll see you next time next week thank, thank you all right, thank you so thank much you.